As you know, my name is Kainson, and today we are going to be continuing from the 8th of our Hacker Rank Coding Challenge. Today we are going to be talking about dictionaries and maps. Now, this is very, very important topic because uh, dictionaries and maps are data structures that are very, very important to programmers and software engineers because it helps you solve problems quickly and it helps you uh, iterate or manage large arrays of items or large set of items. The difficulty for this problem is easy as well, but I think it's more or less to the other edge of easy. <laughs> so, so let's see what the task is all about. Given n names and phone numbers, assemble a phone book that maps friends' names to their respective phone numbers. You will then be given an unknown number of names to query your phone book for. For each name query, print the associated entry from your phone book on a new line in the form name is equal to phone number and if an entry for name is not found, print not found. Your phone book should be dictionary map hash map data structure. So it's, they don't allow us to use array or list or set. So the first line contains an integer denoting the number of entries in the phone book. Each line describes an entry in the form of two space separated values on a single line. All right, so I recommend you read everything. So in this case, we have the first line to be the number of items in the phone book. So this is a phone book, right? So we have three items in the phone book and this is the queries we are going to search the phone book to check if these items are available in the phone book. Now the problem with this problem, <laughs> or the problem with this challenge, is that they are telling us that after n lines of phone book entry, take note, there are unknown number of lines of queries. That's where we have to crack. So this line, we don't know how many and what complicates it a bit is that if you go down, we have to read these lines. So how do we know when to stop? That's the question. All right, so let's go ahead to get started. I don't know why my whiteboard does not show up. So let me see, one note. Okay, so let me quit one note and I'm going to reopen one note one more time. All right, so let me see. I think I should have one note here. Okay, good. So let me explain how to solve this problem and then we continue from there. Let me shift this this way. All right, so we are going to, we are going to day eight at this point. So the first thing we need to worry about is to read the input. So the first thing we do at this point is that we are going to read, the first line should be the number of items in the phone book. So I'm going to say n is equal to input and we read n. Of course, we are going to convert to integer. Now we have to initialize an empty phone book because we need a phone book. We are going to be writing things into this phone book. And now the phone book has to be a dictionary. In Python, you use dictionary. Uh, it plays the role of hash table or hash map and stuff like that. So to initialize an empty dictionary, you use the curly braces like this. So the next thing we want to do is to iterate from 0 to n and read inputs that we are going to write into this form book. So I'm going to say for um, i in range from 0 to, to, to n, right? Okay. So we need to read in two items, name and number and we assign it to the phone book. So this phone book is of the form uh, name, like this, and number. Now we are gonna read this input as two items space separated. So we expect the user to enter name, space, number. So after reading the space, name, uh, space number, name number i'm gonna assign it to two variables a and b all right so i'm going to read the input input like this okay i'm going to strip it 
and we are going to split it by the space, right? So we are going to split it by space like this. So this Python syntax. So we now have name and number. So if you want, you can call it name and num here. So I think it's gonna make uh, for clarity if we just call it name and num. So let me just call it name, comma, num. All right, so we now write it into the phone book of the, in this way. To write into the phone book, we are gonna say phone book, phone book, uh, if I can remember phone book, name is equal to number so what we are doing here is still just reading the inputs from the user okay so let's now go to solve the problem all right okay so uh actually this i don't like the way it looks so let me just call it something else let me call it na and you so also i'm gonna also delete this because i want my code to look a bit elegant so n a n u so name number now we are going to read the queries and as we read we are going to be checking whether it's in the phone book and if it's not we are going to uh we are going to display not found and if it's available, we simply display the name and the number. Now I'm going to say, let me start from here. I'm going to say four. Now that's, this is where I was trying to explain something. Now we are going to read number of items we don't know. So how do we even look through something we don't know? So I think the easiest way is to simply say while, while true, we simply uh, continue reading. So while true, we simply continue reading, okay? So while true, uh, we are going to now read the name. We are going to read the name because we are reading the names. And I'm going to say name, in this case, is equal to imputes. Is it called impute the strip? Okay, so this is what we normally do. And we are now going to check if name is it if, if name is empty, we are going to stop. But if name is in the form book, then we are going to print it. Now I think you understand what we are, what we are going to do from here. So let's go back to HackerRank and just write the code exactly the way it should be. So as I write, I'm going to be explaining. So I'm going to say n is equal to int. I'm going to convert this to int imputes dot strip, strip the white spaces. And yeah, so we have this. And the next thing we are going to do is initialize our phone book to an empty dictionary like this. And now we are going to iterate from zero to n and read n items from the input. So I'm going to say for i in range zero to n, and we are going to now say name and number, name and number equals equals inputs. And I'm going to strip white spaces, strip up and dot split by space because we are saying that we're going to enter the name and the number separated by space. And after then, we now add to dictionary by saying phone book name equals number. Okay, this is fine. So we've created our phone book at this point. Now, I want you to pay attention to what is happening here. We are going to read items, unknown number of items. So we are going to say while true, read an unknown number of items here. Um, I'm going to say if, uh, 
sorry. So we are going to read. So I'm going to say name. Or let's call it entry because I don't want to use another name. Is it equal to impute the tree? Okay. All right. Perfect. So we have an entry we've read from here. So we are now going to check if this entry if this entry is in the phone book so i'm going to say if entry now to check if something is in the dictionary you say if this entry because in this case we have the name to be the key and the value to be the number so we are going to be checking all the keys so i'm going to say if entry entry in phone book dot keys so in this way this is how you you check if the name exists in the dictionary if it exists in this case we are going to simply print the name equals the number so i'm going to print name equals number and specify the name and the number the formats specify the name to be the entry right entry and the number is going to be phone book for that entry right so phone book entry gives us the value phone book name gives us a value okay um i'm going to say else the name is not there, so I'm going to print not found. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to run this code and let's see what happens. There are some things we need to talk about because at the end of the day, we're going to see how does this terminate because it's going to be indefinite. But for first, let's just run it to see what we have. So I'm going to run this code at this point. Um, yeah, something fails. We have an output you can see. Our output is exactly the expected output right here. However, it's telling us there is end of file uh, while reading a line because this is, um, it continues to read even if it has read what is required. So let's try to solve this problem to it by using a try catch block. So I'm going to say try and I'm going to because if we use a try catch block, then we are going to prevent uh, this Python from throwing this exception we see right here. We're gonna catch it before it even uh, crashes our code. So I'm going to say accept EOF error. And no, you, are, you have to be here, not there, all right? Okay, so if this error occurs, you stop. If it comes to the end of file, you stop. So let's run it to see what we have one more time. So we can see that the sample test case passed. So what I'm going to do now is to submit this code and let's see if everything works fine. All right, so you can see that everything worked perfectly well. And take note that we use while true, we use while true and indefinite, re, uh, indefinite entry we have to use try catch to catch end of file exception before they are called. Right, so I'm going to be stopping here. Thank you for viewing. And also, if you've come this far, thumbs up. We are going to see in the next challenge, which is day nine. And before then, remember to subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment if you like this video. And if you have challenges as well, let me know. I remain Times on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.